Welcome back to the Circuit Sphere. Today I'll be comparing my new Mac Studio with the M1 Max chip to my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro with the i9 processor. I'll talk about the specs of each, run four benchmarks Geekbench 6, Cinebench 2024, Unigen Valley, and Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Then I'll go over the results and conclude with my thoughts on how both computers performed. I'll start by going over the specs of both computers, beginning with the Mac Studio. When it was new, this Mac Studio cost $2,799, but now you can find it used for between $1,700 and $2,000. It has a 3.2 gigahertz M1 Max chip with 10 cores, and the memory was upgraded from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes. The storage was also upgraded from 512 gigabytes to one terabyte. And this model also has Apple's 32 core GPU. On the back of this computer, it has four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 10 gigabyte ethernet connection, two USB ports, and an HDMI port. On the front, there are two USB-A ports and an SD card reader. This Mac Studio can support up to five displays, four at 6K resolution and a fifth at 4K through the HDMI port on the back. Now over to the MacBook Pro. This 2019 MacBook Pro originally sold for $2,799 as well but now you can find it used for around $700, give or take. It has a 2.3 gigahertz ninth generation eight core CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, one terabyte of storage, and a dedicated AMD Radeon Pro 5500M GPU with four gigabytes of VRAM. This MacBook Pro comes with four Thunderbolt 3 ports and can support up to four displays at 4K resolution. First, I'll be running Geekbench 6. Next, I'm going to run Cinebench 2024. The third test is Unigen Valley. Finally, I'll run the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. First up, Geekbench 6 results. The Mac Studio M1 Max came out swinging with a single core score of 2,414, while the MacBook Pro managed a decent but much lower 1,200. In the multi-core score showdown, the Studio flexed its muscles again with 12,719, leaving the MacBook Pro trailing behind with 4,959. When it came to the compute test, the studio was in a league of its own with a whopping 71,616 compared to the MacBook Pro's 30,223. Talk about a blowout. Next, let's talk Cinebench 2024. The Mac Studio kept up its winning streak, scoring 112 on the single core test and a solid 
832 on the multi-core. The MacBook Pro, on the other hand, scored 59 on single core and 443 on multi-core. It's clear that the studio isn't just winning, it's dominating. Then I ran the Unigen Valley benchmark here. The Mac Studio hit 80.1 frames per second with a score of 4,891. The MacBook Pro, it was only able to muster 48.9 frames per second with a score of 2,047. The Studio is really just showing off at this point. And finally, let's check out the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. The Mac Studio recorded an insane 5,944.9 megabits per second read speed and 5,472.5 megabits per second write speed. Meanwhile, the MacBook Pro struggled along with a read speed of 2,080 megabits per second and a write speed of 2,349.9 megabits per second. The studio isn't just faster, it's in another dimension. So let's sum up the carnage here. Overall, the Mac Studio M1 Max performed a mind-blowing 113.17% better across the board. For CPU-specific tasks, it's 108.82% better but where the Mac Studio really wiped the floor with the MacBook Pro was the disk speeds with a staggering 159.34% advantage. Oh, did I mention the Mac Studio did all this while running 35.11% cooler. To wrap things up, it seems the Intel Max time is coming to an end. I believe Apple will stop updating Intel Max within the next year, while Apple Silicon will continue getting support for many years. Honestly, I don't see much reason to choose an Intel Mac over Apple Silicon anymore, except maybe for the price. Sure, you can find some good deals on Intel Macs that might be tempting, but I recommend saving up a bit more and getting an Apple Silicon Mac instead. You can get a Mac Mini M2 for $499 on Amazon. And if you need a laptop, the M3 MacBook Air is available for $899 on Amazon too. I've put the links in the description below. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. What do you make of the benchmark results? Do you think upgrading my 2019 MacBook Pro to the Mac Studio M1 Max was the right move? Make sure to subscribe for more Mac content. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Until next time, have fun. And make sure to take time for your passions. So high, I'm hypnotized.